the Guangzhou Uprising, alternatively called May 18 Democratic Uprising by UNESCO, and also known as Guangzhou Democratization Movement, refers to a popular uprising in the city of Guangzhou, South Korea from May 18 to 27, 1980. Estimates suggest up to 606 people may have died during this period. Guangzhou citizens took up arms when local Jenim University students, who were demonstrating against the Chandu Hwan government, were fired, upon, killed, and beaten in an unprecedented attack by government troops. The uprising eventually ended in defeat on May 27, 1980. The event is sometimes called 518, in reference to the date the movement began. Some critics of the event point to the fact that it occurred before Chandu Hwan officially took office, and so contend that it could not really have been a simple student protest against him that started it. However, Chandu Hwan had become the default leader of South Korea at that time since coming into power on December 12, 1979, after leading a successful military coup of the previous South Korean government. During Chan Du Hwan's presidency, the incident was also misrepresented by the media as a rebellion inspired by communist sympathizers. By 1997, a national cemetery and day of commemoration, along with acts to compensate and restore honor to victims, were established. In 2011, 1980 archives for the May 18 Democratic Uprising against military regime located in Guangzhou City Hall were inscribed on the UNESCO Memory of the World Register. Background President Park Chung-hee was assassinated on October 26, 1979 after ruling for 18 years. This abrupt ending of an authoritarian regime left South Korean politics in a state of instability. New President Choi Kyu-har and his cabinet had little control over the country, and South Korean Army General Chan Du Hwan took control of the government through the coup d'acute TAT of December 12, 1979. The nation's democratization movements, which had been suppressed during Park's tenure, were being revived. With the beginning of a new semester in March 1980, professors and students expelled for pro-democracy activities returned to their universities, and student unions were formed. These unions led nationwide demonstrations for reforms, including an end to martial law, democratization, minimum wage demands, and freedom of press. These activities culminated in the anti-martial law demonstration at Seoul Station on May 15, 1980 in which about 100,000 students and citizens participated. In response, Chundu Hwan took several suppressive measures. On May 17, Chundu Hwan forced the cabinet to extend martial law to the whole nation, which had previously not applied to Jeju province. The extended martial law closed universities, banned political activities and further curtailed the press. To enforce martial law, troops were dispatched to various parts of the country. On the same day, the Defense Security Command raided a national conference of student union leaders from 55 universities, who were gathered to discuss their next moves in the wake of the May 15 demonstration. 26 politicians, including South Geola Province native Kim Dae-young, were also arrested on charges of instigating demonstrations. Ensuing strife focused in the South Geola province, particularly in the then provincial capital, Guangzhou, for complex political and geographical reasons. These factors were both deep and contemporary. The Geola, or Honam, region is the granary of Korea. However, due to its abundant natural resources, the Geola area has historically been the target for exploitation by both domestic and foreign powers. Oppositional protest has existed in Korea historically, especially in the South Chiola province region, during the Donghuk Peasant Revolution. 
Guangzhou Students' Movement, Zhou Su Sunchen Rebellion, Regional Resistance to the Japanese Invasions of Korea, and more recently under the Third Republic of South Korea and Fourth Republic of South Korea, as can be seen by the three excerpts below. Park Chung-hee's dictatorship had showered economic and political favors on his native Jiangsang province in the southeast, at the expense of the Jiola region of the southwest. The latter became the real hotbed of political opposition to the dictatorship, which in turn led to more discrimination from the center. Finally, in May 1980 the city of Guangzhou in South Jiola province exploded in a popular uprising against the new military strongman, General Chan Du Hwan, who responded with a bloodbath that killed hundreds of Guangzhou citizens. The city of Guangzhou was subject to particularly severe and violent repression by the military after nationwide martial law was imposed. The denial of democracy and the heightening authoritarianism that accompanied the coming to power of Chan Du Hwan to replace Park prompted nationwide protests which because of Chala's Giola's, historical legacy of dissent and radicalism, were most intense in that region. The Kwangju incident is not a communist right but a righteous movement against oppression of democracy and freedom. Thus, the main force behind this noble movement is neither mobs nor communists. It was we, the democracy-loving Chonin people who rose to protect our rights in the name of democracy, citizens' testimony, timeline. May 18-21 On the morning of May 18, students gathered at the gate of Chonin National University, in defiance of its closing. By 9.30 a.m., around 200 students had arrived, they were opposed by 30 paratroopers. At around 10 a.m., soldiers and students clashed. Soldiers charged the students. Students threw stones. The protest then moved to the downtown Namna area. There the conflict broadened to around 2,000 participants by afternoon. Initially, police handled the Namna protests. At 4 p.m., though, the ROC Special Warfare Command sent paratroopers to take over. The arrival of these 686 soldiers from 33rd and 35th Battalions of the 7th Airborne Brigade marked a new, violent, and now infamous phase of suppression. Witnesses say soldiers club both demonstrators and onlookers. Testimonies, photographs, and internal records attest to the use of bayonets. The first known fatality was a 29-year-old deaf man named Kim Jiong Chiol, who was clubbed to death on May 18 while passing by the scene. As citizens were infuriated by the violence, the number of protesters rapidly increased and exceeded 10,000 by May 20. As the conflict escalated, the army began to fire on citizens, killing an unknown number near Guangzhou Station on May 20. That same day, angered protesters burned down the local MBC station, which had misreported the situation then unfolding in Guangzhou. Four policemen were killed at a police barricade near the provincial government building after a car rammed into them. On the night of May 20, hundreds of taxis led a large parade of buses, large trucks and cars toward the provincial office to meet the protest. As the drivers drove in the demonstration, the troops used tear gas, pulled them out of the cars and beat them. These drivers of democracy showed up to support the citizens and the demonstration because of troop brutality witnessed earlier in the day, as well as out of anger after many taxi drivers were assaulted when trying to assist the injured and while taking people to the hospital. Some were shot after the drivers attempted to use the vehicles to block soldiers or as weapons. The violence climaxed on May 21. At about 1 p.m., the army fired at a protesting crowd gathered in front of the Jenin provincial office, causing casualties. In response, some protesters raided armories and police stations in nearby towns and armed themselves with M1 rifles and carbines. 
Later that afternoon, bloody gunfights between civilian militias and the army broke out in the provincial office square. By 5.30 p.m., militias had acquired two light machine guns and used them against the army, which began to retreat from the downtown area. May 22-25 blockade of Guangzhou, and further atrocities at this point, all troops retreated to suburban areas, waiting for reinforcements. During this period the army blocked all routes and communications leading into and out of the city. Although there was a lull in fighting between militias and the army, more casualties were incurred when soldiers fired at a bus that attempted to break out of the city in Jiwondong, killing 17 of the 18 passengers. On May 23, the following day soldiers mistook boys swimming in Wanj Reservoir for attempted crossing and opened fire at them resulting in one death. Later that day the army suffered its heaviest casualties when troops mistakenly fired at each other in Songamdong. Settlement committees meanwhile in the liberated city of Guangzhou. The Citizens Settlement Committee and the Students Settlement Committee were formed. The former was composed of about 20 preachers, lawyers and professors. They negotiated with the army demanding the release of arrested citizens, compensation for victims and prohibition of retaliation in exchange for disarmament of militias. The city's order was well maintained, but negotiations came to a deadlock as the army urged the militias to immediately disarm themselves. This issue caused division within the settlement committees, some wanted immediate surrender, while others called for continued resistance until their demands were met. After heated debates, eventually those calling for continued resistance took control. Protests in other regions as the news of the bloody crackdown spread. Further protests against the government broke out in nearby regions including Hwasun, Naju, Harenam, Mokpo, Jomnam, Gangjin, and Muin. While protests ended peacefully in most regions, in Harenam there were gunfights between armed protesters and troops. By May 24, most of these protests had died down, except for Mokpo where protests continued until May 28. May 26 By May 26, the army was ready to re-enter the city. Members of the Citizens Settlement Committee unsuccessfully tried to block the army's advance by lying down on the street. As the news of the imminent attack spread, civil militias gathered in the provincial office, preparing for the last stand. May 27 at 4 a.m., troops from five divisions moved into the downtown area and defeated the civil militias within 90 minutes. Casualties There is no universally accepted death toll for the 1980 Guangzhou uprising. Official figures released by the Martial Law Command put the death toll at 144 civilians, 22 troops and four police killed, with 127 civilians. 109 troops and 144 police wounded. Individuals who attempted to dispute these figures were liable for arrest for spreading false rumors, according to the May 18th Bereaved Family Association. At least 165 people died between May 18th and 27. Another 76 are still missing and presumed dead. 23 soldiers and 4 policemen were killed during the uprising, including 13 soldiers killed in the friendly fire incident between troops in Song and Dong. Figures for police casualties are likely to be higher, due to reports of several policemen being killed by soldiers for releasing captured rioters. The official figures have been criticized by some as being too low. Based on reports by foreign press sources and critics of the Chandu HWAN administration, it has been argued that the actual death toll was in the 1,000 to 2,000 range. Aftermath The government denounced the uprising as a rebellion instigated by Kim Dae-young and his followers. In subsequent trials, Kim was convicted and sentenced to death, although his punishment was later reduced in response to international outcries. Overall 1,394 people were arrested for some involvement in the Guangzhou incident and 427 were indicted. Among them, 7 received death sentences and 12 received life sentences. 
the Gwangju uprising had a profound impact on South Korean politics and history. Chundu Hwan already had popularity problems because he took power through a military coup. But after authorizing the dispatch of special forces upon citizens, his legitimacy was further damaged. The movement also paved the way for later movements in the 1980s that eventually brought democracy to South Korea. The Gwangju uprising has become a symbol of South Koreans' struggle against authoritarian regimes and the fight for democracy. Beginning in 2000, the May 18 Memorial Foundation has offered an annual Gwangju Prize for Human Rights to a notable human rights defender in memory of the uprising. Anti-American sentiment The 1980s marked a surge in anti-Americanism in Korea, widely traced to the events of May 1980. According to Bruce Cummings, Gwangju convinced a new generation of young Koreans that the democratic movement had developed not with the support of Washington, as an older generation of more conservative Koreans thought, but in the face of daily American support for any dictator who could quell the democratic aspirations of the Korean people. The result was an anti-American movement in the 1980s that threatened to bring down the whole structure of American support for the ROC. American cultural centers were burned to the ground. Students simulated themselves in protest of Reagan's support for Chun. Fundamental to this movement was a perception of U.S. complicity in Chun's rise to power, and, more particularly, in the Guangzhou uprising itself. These matters remain controversial. It is clear, for example, that the U.S. authorized the ROC Army's 20th Division to retake Guangzhou, as acknowledged in a 1982 letter to the New York Times by then Ambassador William H. Gleestein. General John A. Wickham, with my concurrence, permitted transfer of well-trained troops of the 20th Roka Division from martial law duty in Seoul to Guangzhou because law and order had to be restored in a situation that had run amok following the outrageous behavior of the Korean Special Forces, which had never been under General Wickham's command. However, as Guangzhou Uprising editors Scott Stokes and Lee note, whether the expulsion of government troops left the situation lawless or amok is open to dispute, but the gravest questions pertain to the initial triggering use of South Korean special forces. The United States has always denied foreknowledge of their deployment, most definitively in a June 19. 1989 white paper that report additionally downplays Gleestein's and others' characterizations of the U.S. actions. Ambassador Gleestein has stated that the U.S. approved the movement of the 20th Division and a U.S. Department of Defense spokesman on May 23, 1980, stated that the U.S. had agreed to release from OPCON operational control of the troops sent to Guangzhou, irrespective of the terminology. Under the rights of national sovereignty, the ROKG had the authority to deploy the 20th Division as it saw fit. Once it had OPCON, regardless of the views of the U.S. government, However, the report is problematic in two respects. Declassified documents contradict its claims. Its judicial focus skirts larger issues of the United States' support of the Chun regime. Re-evaluation At the Mangwoldong Cemetery in Guangzhou where victims' bodies were buried, survivors of the democratization movement and bereaved families have held an annual memorial service on May 18 every year since 1983. Many pro-democracy demonstrations in the 1980s demanded official recognition of the truth of the uprising and punishment for those responsible. Official re-evaluation began after the reinstatement of direct presidential elections in 1987. In 1988, the National Assembly held a public hearing on the Guangzhou Uprising and officially renamed the incident as the Guangzhou Uprising. While this official renaming occurred in 1987, it can also be found translated into English as Guangzhou People's Uprising. In 1995, as public pressure mounted, the National Assembly passed the special law on May 18th democratization movement. 
which enabled prosecution of those responsible for the December 12th coup de acut TAT in Guangzhou uprising despite the fact that the statute of limitations had run out. Subsequently eight politicians were indicted for high treason and the massacre in 1996. Their punishments were settled in 1997, including an initial death sentence, changed to a life sentence for Chan Du Hwan, former President Roh Tae Wu, Chan's successor and fellow participant in the December 12 coup, was also sentenced to life in prison. But all convicts were pardoned in the name of national reconciliation on December 22 by President Kim Young Sam. Based on advice from then-president-elect Kim Dae-young, in 1997, May 18 was declared an official Memorial Day. In 2002, a law privileging bereaved families took effect, and the Mang Waldong Cemetery was elevated to the status of a national cemetery. On May 18, 2013, President Park Jian-hai attended the 33rd anniversary of the Guangzhou Uprising, and said, I feel the sorrow of family members and the city of Guangzhou every time I visit the National May 18 Cemetery. I believe achieving a more mature democracy is a way to repay the sacrifice paid by those 